What's up, vlog? So we're about to get a great group of Keller Williams uh, real estate agents come in the office, brought them some food, a couple beverages, because they're going to have to be able to listen to me for about an hour. We're going to do a class on um, uh, just financing. What time? Around 11 o'clock, I think, and kind of get everything going. OK. <laughs> Already got a, got a customer. All right, let me get this part set up. And something fun and sexy financing Woo who's excited yeah yes everybody excited about this yes well I, trust me I understand my industry and what I do is not very sexy but we try to have fun with it so the way I try to make it fun is really measuring products and services that we have to impact right of people how many more people can we really truly help and I lead with education. So this is me. My name is Bob Johnson. Nobody remembers it, so I go by Bob Mortgage. That's how I market. That's my brand, right? So Bob Mortgage. I've uh, been doing this for 22 years. I've been very blessed to provide financing to over 25,000 families. I love the fact that we've been able to impact that many people's lives, okay? Now, we, we, this is why we do it, to get five-star reviews. That's, that's where we know that we're providing an exceptional experience. You're in real estate, I'm in mortgage. Truly, we're in the feel and experience business. The better we can make people feel about the experience they're having, this is what we get, a five-star review right there. And that leads to more referrals. And that is a very cheap lead cost, right? So feel and experience drives higher margins. Okay. So we're going to get into financing questions. So before we get jump into the bond grant DPA programs, we're going to talk about some everyday financing. What are the what are the loan types that are that we do today? What are like conventional, right? So what are some other ones that we do? FHA, conventional, conventional USDA, VA. NBA. Perfect. So that's easy. Conventional jumbo FHA, VA, USDA. We do primary, secondary investment. Everybody know what secondary homes are? A, a secondary home is going to be something like a lake house, uh, a Colorado home, or let's say you have you live in Dallas, but your kid goes to school in California and you want to buy a house there. It can be considered a secondary home. It can't be the house around the corner because that's probably going to be an investment property because you'll put somebody in it and you'll turn around and lease it out. Believe me, I get, I get asked that a lot by real estate agents, okay? Can we make this a secondary? Well, you're going to have a tenant in there renting it out. That becomes investment. And the reason why is because it comes with lower interest rates and less money down. Okay? So I get it. Now, conforming loan limit. That's conventional. What is a 2018 conforming loan limit? The loan limit. How much can you borrow just to do a regular conventional loan? 453, 100. Close. So if it's above that, what does that become? A jumbo. Yes, a jumbo loan. What's the 2018 FHA loan limit? It's county specific, right? Let's go with the big, let's go with DFW, right? Type tail. What'd you got? 380. 380. 411. 411. 386, 400. Now, what that means is you can buy a $400,000 property and qualify for just 3.5% down on an FHA loan. That's, that's good, right? Now, what about VA? VA, these are for veterans, right? First off, we should give veterans homes, but we can't, so we have to have a loan. So, on a VA loan, what's the loan limit? $453,100, okay? It follows conventional uh, loan limits, all right? What's the minimum down payment for FHA? 3% and a half. Three and a half. What about conventional? Three. Three. VA? Zero. Zero. Okay, here's always a good one. Go to Mexico. We have a little too much tequila. <laughs> We made some bad decisions. We signed on a dotted line. We bought, a, bought ourselves a timeshare. Oh Woke up the next morning and we're like, oh my God, what did we do? We don't need this timeshare. It's Mexico. Let's get on the plane, get that H-E double hockey sticks out of here, and let's get back to Texas. Let's get back here. It's in Mexico. It ain't going to matter. So you don't pay it. 
guess what? It's reporting on your credit report. Timeshares do that. Now you have a foreclosure. Timeshare is a house, right? It's a, that's a, I mean, it's a home. So how long now do we have to wait before you can buy an actual home here in Texas to be able to live in? You don't. Because for some reason, they, they won't allow a 1% payment to get rid of that, but they understand tequila is a bad decision, so they're okay with it. And they, and they say, you know what? It's okay. You know, don't worry about it. We'll let you buy a house immediately because a timeshare is not treated as a mortgage. Okay, it's treated as consumer debt. Now, we have to count, like any collection, you have to count 5% of the outstanding balance as a monthly payment. Okay, so foreclosure, conventional loan. Foreclosure, conventional loan, how long do you have to wait? Seven years. What about FHA? What? Three. Okay. Everybody know the difference between a Chapter 7 and a Chapter 13 bankruptcy? Chapter 7, you just discharge the debt. Get rid of it. Chapter 13, you're going to pay it back over time. It could take three years, five years to pay it back, depending on the balance, right? So after a discharge on a Chapter 7, we're going to do a conventional loan. So let's say you file a Chapter 7 in November. It's typically going to be discharged by, call it February. How long do we have to wait from the discharge date to be able to allow that buyer to get into a conventional loan? Four years. <laughs> okay, four years. Four years, Chapter 7. Um, you, have to, you have to wait before you can buy on a conventional loan. So let's go FHA Chapter 13. Okay, that's where they're paying it back. So payback, it takes three years. Now how long do we have to wait from the discharge date to be able to do an FHA loan for somebody in a Chapter 13? So you, it does not have to be discharged. Okay, you have to be in the bankruptcy for at least one year. Okay, you have to be in, inside the bankruptcy for at least one year. We have to be able to prove on-time payments for one year. And then we have to be able to get the bank, bankruptcy trustee's approval to enter into new debt. Well, okay, so how do we do that? Well, we're, we're going to go to the trustee and say, look, they've been renting for $2,000, and they want to buy this house, and now it's going to be $8,000 a month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trustee's going to say, no, absolutely not. We're not going to approve that because they can't pay their bankruptcy back. So if we go to them and say, hey, they're renting for two grand, their payment's going to be $2,500 or $3,000, you okay with that? As long as it's within what their rental piece is, they're going to say, fine, we'll approve it because they still have the ability to handle the debt that they have and the bankruptcy debt, right? So that, that's why that, that part's important. All right, so we're going to talk about grant programs, all that leading up to this, okay? So there are two types of, of programs within the grant program. There's a mortgage credit certificate, MCC, and there's a down payment and closing cost assistance, okay? Those are the two types of, of assistance we're going to go over. So what is an MCC? That is where we can give a client up to $2,000 of tax credit every year that they have their mortgage. Now, it also can help the buyer reduce their debt to income ratio if you use it correctly. So as a lender, we have the option to reduce the debt on an FHA. Now, there's some rules behind it. They have to be a first-time home buyer. First-time home buyer means they have no ownership interest in a primary residence in the last three years, which is kind of cool. That means they could have owned a home before, but they just can't have an ownership interest in a primary in the last three years. So down payment assistance. This is just basically a percentage that the state will give you to be able to buy a home, to help them with their down payment and their closing cost. And in some cases, all your down payment and closing cost, and then you can buy a house for no money. We have these a lot. I mean, literally, like we just did one uh, last, I think it was last Friday or last Thursday, the lady bought a house for 298 bucks. And my, my, my post, my reply, because she thanked us and everything, I said, yeah, that's only 65 lattes at Starbucks. <laughs> I mean, literally, it's only like 65 lattes, right? You bought a house for 65 lattes. How great is that? So guys, that is all I got. I really do appreciate you coming. I'd be happy to answer any other questions you have now or later, but um, I'll make sure you get an email copy of that presentation. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you for making my day great. Go make everybody else's day great. <laughs>